So, uh, so thinking about uh, D.C. and and state governments um, uh, all around the country, they have stepped up or are looking to step up uh, uh, rules uh, that would affect U.S.-China uh, commerce. Uh, how much of that do you think is good thing, and how much of that may not be well, so I, good? Well, obviously, <clears throat> national security comes first. The strongest human instinct is self-preservation. National security comes first, and we must do whatever we can to protect that. And that means executive orders, actions by Congress, our agencies, etc. However, my concern is that um, um, the United States, as has China, have used national security as an overall umbrella um, to uh, protect local companies, protect them, not just from security perspective, but from a commercial perspective. It's too broad. The umbrella is just too broad. Mm. And add to that, we don't ever get examples. Okay, we say, you know, our security is jeopardized. Well, show me. Where's the beef? Where's the mm. example? Now, I don't know. Yeah, I know in security measures, in the security world, it's a little hard to get examples, but I think we should. Okay, China, here's a good example of what you've been doing. And, you know, don't forget, we spy on China, too. American press talks a lot about China spying on the U.S. They don't talk much about the U.S. spying on China, mm -hmm. as we do in virtually every country around the world, as does China. So um, I, I think that, um, that actions by the U.S. government properly tailored and restricted are good. We talk about, you know, um, United States, Dick Sullivan does, you know, small yard, high fence. Um, I think that's that's pretty good. The trouble is Chinese don't believe it. And mm. I, my other concern is, is state action, state governments. Mm. I mean, in my home state here in Montana, my gosh, we passed legislation to ban TikTok for everybody. Now, that's not going to go anywhere, but it passed the state legislature signed by the governor. In addition, measures to prohibit the state of, to require the state of Montana University system to report any contacts with China. Um, and add to that, we land restrictions, no, no Chinese land ownership uh, near military installation. The trouble mm -hmm. is, um, if I were in Chinese shoes or anybody's shoes, you had U.S. investors' shoes, my gosh, you know, this is getting out of hand here. Every state's going his its own direction. You got a federal government. Generally, foreign policy is under the auspices of the president. Um, that's what's happened historically. Uh, president Eisenhower walked the Oval Office, see that big globe there. Hey, I'm, I'm in charge of world world foreign policy. And ever since then, it's become more difficult for presidents to be sort of in charge of foreign policy because mm -hmm. the world's so much more complicated, it's more commercial, internet, you name it. Um, mm -hmm. It's very hard. I, I think the administration should try to figure out some ways to work with states. So there's some cohesion, some coherence, not, not one state doing one thing, another state another. And, and it's, it's happening in part, that is all this, all these actions by both the Congress and the state because of domestic politics in America. Uh, yeah. Domestic politics toward China is driven by anti-China sentiment. And it's very easy for anybody to be critical of China. There's no cost. There is no cost to any congressman or a senator uh, or, or, or state legislator for criticizing China. There's no downside. So they do it, help get reelected. 